course not. <clears throat> yeah, so I think we're starting off with a ZVT for our first series. And um, what was the map pool this week, Snipe? Uh, the first game is Circuit Breakers, second game Tau Cross, and I believe the third game would be Crossing Field if needed. Okay, got it. Well, if you're ready, let's uh, get started with uh, the first series. I think it'll be between Doc Holiday versus Navain. Yeah, so this is uh, ZVT. Uh, Doc Holiday, of course, fairly well known. I mean, he streams too. Uh, Zerg player on my team. And... Oh no, what, what, what sort of name are we looking at here? <laughs> oh wow, okay, so as the purple chair and on the top left here we have from Chobas with Attitude, Nevain. And on the top right as the blue zerg with the uh, Herbon Sucks Dicks name, we have... Uh, Snipe, you said it out loud. Doc Holiday. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. No, no. No, no doc, BM, doc, guys. Doc. No BM. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Herbmon isn't even the coach for either of these teams, so oh. I know they're they're good buddies and joke around though. So yeah. very, very nice. And it looks like uh, we will not be having a four pool or five pool coming from Doc Holiday. <laughs> yeah, we've seen him do a little bit of. Uh, funky or cheesy stuff before so far it's looking pretty normal well, this drone is going out a little early I guess he wants to scout make sure there's nothing uh, fishy going on yeah and I from what I understand I think Doc Holiday is known to be a pretty aggressive player which isn't a bad thing at all I mean it's it's kind of good that you mix it up so that your opponents stay guessing and you're not predictable from week to week um, I mean, at this point in the game, maybe B teamers or even A teamers don't really have to worry about, um, you know, mixing it up like this. Maybe just playing a solid macro game will be uh, more than enough to secure victories for you guys. But uh, yeah. yeah, in general, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, for sure. Especially if you're playing like in a three game series, you might want to like mix things up for one game or do something to throw your opponent off guard just so they know, you know, don't get too comfortable. Yeah, and it looks like we have the. You know, pretty normal 12 hatch opening from Doc. And Vane, you know, has a pretty normal Rax timing as well. So very standard play from both the players. And no gas yet. So it doesn't look like there's going to be any sort of weird mech or 1-1-1 strategy. We do see uh, quite a bit of spam coming out of Doc, though. I think he's known for his what? spam as well. Over 400 APM. These are V-Team <laughs> are games, right, Snipe? Yeah, yeah. He spams a lot. He's got like triple, triple our APM. Yeah. Triple your, he's got more than that for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but look, let's see here. I mean, he's getting his pool down and another hatch. Pretty standard stuff. We should see him getting a, either a gas or a third hatch coming up here. Dancing around a little drone. And yeah, there's the third hatch. Coming up. It looks like Nevain is getting ready to take his CC as well, natural CC. And he knows he's pretty safe to do so because the lings are, haven't popped yet. I mean, the pool just finished. So. Yeah, I like what he did here. So I'm pretty confident he saw that you know the spawning pool wasn't um, you know wasn't too early or anything like that. So he felt comfortable placing the CC in the correct position on the low ground. And he didn't, you know, build it on the high ground or anything like that. So, yeah, it's a little, you know, probably insignificant boost to his economy, but it's it's a good reaction. And uh, we can see Nevain starting to throw down a supply depot to kind of wall off his choke area here. Yeah, and um, make, it, make it harder for his zergling run by. I'm not entirely sure if this is the case, but I think Doc might have forgotten his uh, extractor, and it's a little bit late because... Uh, I mean, at this point, I feel like the Zerg wants to be at least researching Ling speed for an all-in or something like that, or getting their layer started. Yeah, I agree. Like, the gas still isn't done. That feels late to yeah. me, too. Like, I think he, he has the mineral, enough minerals that he could have got Ling speed or layer if he had the gas for it. 
So I think that's late. And he also threw down a creep colony a little early. I mean, maybe he's afraid of uh, early marines coming. But that seems a little bit early, especially since we see Nevain's not throwing on any pressure yet. Yeah, I think throwing down a sunken at this point might be a little bit overkill. Um, as long as he has like an overlord somewhere, um, like that can kind of see when marines push out somewhere on the ledge, or if he has like a ling at the front, uh, he can you know probably pop down a uh, a creep colony and morph it into a sunken in time. Um, but now you know at this point he kind of lost that drone. At least he hasn't made it into a sunken yet, so that's you know 50 minerals he saved by not going and doing that right away. Uh, but uh, we do see his lair coming up now. Uh, I don't think he's gotten link speed yet. Uh, Nevain is pushing out with these marines. It's a little risky if Doc had a bunch of speedlings, he could surround and kill this because has no medics. So you just got to make sure you're watching these marines if you're going to do this. Yeah, for sure. So I feel like moving out uh, this early with his units, especially, you know, with medics so close on the way, like... Uh, He's putting himself in a pretty risky situation. Um, these yeah. Marines really should be coming back. Uh, I mean, it does force uh, some sunkens here out, and maybe he noticed that Herbmon, or <laughs> noticed that <laughs> Dog Holiday didn't have uh, Ling Speed yet. So he felt a little more comfortable like moving out on the map. And if that's the case, like good job for realizing and recognizing that. Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, despite moving out in a pretty dangerous position, at the end of the day, he did get a lot of value out of them because he didn't lose the Marines at all, and he forced three Sunkins. So, yeah, not bad at all. He's um in a pretty decent position. I'm not sure if I agree about the turret, uh, the missile turret positioning, though. I mean, I'm not sure what they're protecting at the net. Yeah, that is kind of interesting i mean uh, i don't know if he scanned to see that it was lurker uh, see the hydrogen and no spire or not he has what, two comps okay he has used two scans at least so he probably knows although he's still throwing down turrets in his main at turn his main. so i'm guessing these turrets are out front to kind of detect lurkers from coming up hmm, uh, that usually could with be this, the case? I think you want a bunker too but what I'm kind of confused about here is, uh, yeah, definitely there should be bunkers here instead. Um, when the Zerg player is going for like a two base, uh, like early lurker aggression, like maybe a lurker bust, you definitely want to have at least two bunkers uh, at your front to kind of, um, you know, add extra beefiness to your army. Or else the lurkers are just going to mess with, they're going to destroy your, your marine count. So it looks like Doc is just opting to play defensively right now. He's sending, you know, a few Hydras across the map and taking his third base. Uh, uh, pretty fine to do this, although he's thrown down a couple of Evos and a Queen's Nest at the same time. I guess he's planning on rushing up to a Hive, which, I mean, can be a good play. Defilers are strong in this matchup. And he probably feels pretty safe with these three Lurkers and his Sunkins or Lurkers here on the ramp. He can't really be broken by anything Terran has at the moment. Yeah, for sure. So at this current point in time, um, this position here at the Nat and this ramp position, uh, a control group or two of Marines is not going to be able to bust this at all. So the only option Terran has is maybe if they go for drop ships and sort of bypass this defense, maybe they can do a lot of damage. Um, but for well, sure, this size army is not going to be able to deal with what Doc has at his front. Yeah, we'll have to see what they decide to go for. Um, it looks like uh, in a vein here, our Terran player is adding a science facility. So probably going to get out those vessels, be able to start irradiating lurkers. Uh, the hive is started for Doc. It looks like he's actually expecting a drop to come in. He's got like a lurker buried in his main, and he's got like a couple groups of the lings up there. Yeah, very uh, defensive sort of uh, style coming from him. But it looks like he's um, going to turtle up, get his tech, and... You know be strong with upgrades it looks like he's kind of aiming for um hmm, fast upgrades for like ultralisk maybe okay yeah he is doing melee attack and carapace yeah that might be so what he's building be... up for eventually yeah i mean ultralisk is strong against bio most the part they're they're tanky units in general so 
Um, we got one marine in the middle of the map shooting at an overlord, <laughs> sending all his links to go kill it. it. Almost got it, but not close enough. The overlord lives today, and he's sending one marine to kind of scout, and it just added to the lurkers on the ramp. Both players we can see kind of scouting around, like Doc sending his lanes here, bottom left, making sure Terran's not doing anything sneaky, trying to sneak a base somewhere. Yeah, and interestingly enough, there's still, I don't think there's a Spire out for our Zerg player. And I think at some point, even if you go for, uh, even if you go for Lurkers first, I think having a Spire is really important so that you can snipe uh, Science Vessels and keep the number low. Um, yeah. I mean, even if you want to go Ultralisk or... Uh, you know, for defilers, you want to have some sort of uh, counter player answer to mass science vessels. At yeah, the moment, there's only one out on the map for. Uh, yeah. And as you say, Matt, he's actually just adding a spire now, so. A what? He just started a spire, so. In his Very main. Nice. By the defiler round. I mean, he's got his hive up, his defiler round's finishing. Uh, he's started a Nidus canal. I'm not entirely sure about his Nidus placement at his natural. Like, having it out here in front of the Sunkens and uh, Lurkers makes it easier for Terran to just come in and snipe it. Yeah, definitely. Having it behind his, you know, Sunken and Lurker wall would make a lot more sense here. Yeah, he could, I mean, buy more time, easier to defend. Uh, he won't just lose it right away and then not be able to reinforce. But so it looks like see... the Lurkers, or not Lurkers, the Zerglings at the 9 o'clock uh, killed the SCV that might have been wanting to build an expansion here. So it kind of forces Nevane to pull his entire army back and it gives uh, Doc some more time to finish his upgrades, get his tech, and maybe run away with this game. Because I'm pretty sure if Zerg can get four gases and they're unharassed and they're econ strong, they can just macro up a, you know, save a bunch of gas and macro up a bunch of Ultralisk. And then it becomes very, very difficult for Terran bio to deal with yeah we see docs running down a couple more macro hatches in this third base now he's got a defiler there as well i don't okay yeah he just started the ultralisk cavern now so it looks like that was his plan to get up to ultralisks uh, and defilers if Terran doesn't do anything about this soon he's gonna find himself in a bit of trouble yeah so i think the window for Naveen to kind of be aggressive and put some pressure on might have already passed since defilers are out oh doc tried to save his uh defiler there throwing it into the nidus but i got irradiated just in time he does actually send it back and get a swarm off that's pretty nice but Ooh. see this is what we were just talking about now the nidus just goes down because it was out front there easy to pick off a couple of scourge he does get the science vessel so that's nice i mean denying his vision he has to rely on scans now to get those lurkers so this is an extremely risky position for uh, Nevane to be in. He's kind of purposely, willingly staying under Dark Swarm. And in general, that can be, I don't know, pretty pretty risky, I think. Oh, he's losing a bit of bio to the to those lurkers. Pulls back. He did kill all the sunkens off. Okay, so one really crucial move here, I think, for Doc is that he's able to cancel this uh, this third base. So the entire time, the Terran's resources, they're kind of starting to, um, you know, even though his bank is building up, once these minerals run out and he's not able to secure a third base or a third gas, uh, he's going to sort of fizzle out and not have anything after this. Yeah, nice swarm, and he didn't really pull back in time, so he lost most of his attack here. Like, all he has left is a few marines and a bunch of medics. So he's not going to be able to break the Zerg at this point. He does have an uh, army he could try and reinforce. But as of right now, Zerg's looking to be in a good position, especially since they're going to be able to start getting those Ultralisks out right away here. Yeah, I think that was a nice move by, uh, by Doc Holiday for sure because he kind of took advantage. Terran's paying attention to their army at the front, right? So what does he do? He sends units... Uh, to nine o'clock and he kind of makes things um, more complicated a little bit more confusing and he's able to take advantage of that so good for him yeah and what i'd say to the terran like make sure you're always watching army i know it's hard apm intensive i'm sure but you gotta be like on top of watching that army like armies can die so quickly in this matchup on either side and just 
cost you the game, really, in some cases. So. But uh, he's moved some science vessels off. He got a couple of radiates off on these lurkers, thinning the defenses. But we do see the ultralisks. First ultralisks are out now for Doc. Yeah. And I'm not sure if he has enough here, especially with Swarm, to really do anything to Berserk. Oh, and we actually see a plague wow, go off. That's, that's a huge map. plague. <laughs> Oh, there's a couple of dropships coming over too, but I don't think there's anything in them yet. Oh, that is, that is really unlucky timing. But the plague did so much damage that you know just a few handful of units is able to clean up this army uh, from the Terran. It's kind of a shame, but let's see. Uh, Terran still has a little bit left here, but with the re oh another, another plague goes money off. Money plague from Doc. And if you compare the upgrades between the two uh, two races. I think it's still 1-1 one, one for uh, the Terran, and 4-2, or 2-2 two, or, or two, two, uh, for the Zerg, which is a huge difference. I mean, these Ultralists are not going to be taking any damage from the Marines. So they're 2-1, actually, 2-1. Yeah, it's still good for Zerg, being even on upgrades like this. Uh, we see Doc throwing down another hatchery, taking his fourth base now. Yeah, and well, Terran's super still important. kind of too. I'm not sure if you noticed this tonight, but... Uh, there were two dropships kind of sitting at the nat of Doc, and he did snipe them, so that kind of takes away one option. Um, uh, oh no, there's there two more. Two more. Yeah, and he's right. actually going to go for a drop here now. God, I should never mind. Forget what I was saying then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, Doc's on top of this. He's got his Zerglings here in a way. He's got a couple of lurkers ready to be burrowed. This drop's going to find no damage just be cleaned up really quickly yeah that's probably one of the most uh, frustrating things possible <laughs> when uh, you try to go for maneuvers like this and they just get completely uh, completely stopped it's kind of like uh, as a protoss you recall and your entire army just dies to like 20 mines <laughs> yeah but yeah. And then Terran just pushes out and kills you uh, speaking of the Terran though he's basically I mean he's mined out of his main now uh, so he's on not a lot of minerals left here in his net. He needs to get another base, or Zerg's just gonna like overrun him. Yeah, I don't know sure. about this attack here. Just a random ultralisk and a few links just randomly attacking to the front here. There's plenty of army. This isn't really gonna do much. So I think you know one of the key points of this game, uh, despite Navain having pretty solid macro, his money didn't go up too high, and his supply was kind of always higher than the Zerg. He was never able to secure his um, his third base, so he can't really make a strong transition into the late game. Um, generally, when you stay on two bases for this long, you're kind of hoping or praying that you you do enough damage or you outright kill the opponent. But um, you know, if that doesn't happen, then your follow up into the later stages of the game is going to be really weak. And yeah, we see another drop coming out, but again, this isn't going to really do much. Yeah, it's Terrence just, got on the last legs right now. It's kind of giving units away for free at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, Zerg has got their fourth base. He's not mining from it yet, but he's got it up. <laughs> uh, Terrence trying to take this mineral only, but he needs more gas too. Yeah, and uh, un unfortunately, uh, the Dark Swarm did not protect the Lurkers, so they both died. <laughs> Bit unfortunate for him. But I feel like this is Doc's game at the moment. He's done a really good job of defending and holding off the Terran. Yeah, his third base is still looking very, very fresh. Um, and, yeah, Nevain's distance mining from the CC, but at this point, uh, the supplies between the Zerg and Terran are really, really close. And it just feels like everything's sort of going wrong uh, for Nevain now. Yeah, loses every single science vessel and dropship at Doc's Nat as well, so it's it's looking pretty rough. Yeah, I mean he's continuing to send these small groups of units over, but like look at all the ultralisks Doc has here now. He's just got way too much for this small group of bio and a couple of tanks to deal with. Yeah, there's more ultralisks than marines, and you never want to be in that position. I think, uh, go ahead. I think it was a really good job by um, by uh, by Doc this game though. He seemed to have a pretty clear game plan. Um, you know, from 
from the first you know a few few minutes he kind of um kind of showed that he was going for this late game sort of style with uh, the two early evo chambers yeah it worked out i don't I think, I mean, Terran's trying to throw his stuff in these bunkers, but at this point, the Zerg can just keep making units and sending them over. And I think we're going to see uh, Nevane have to tap out here. Yeah, it looks like Zerg has hit critical mass. I don't think there'll be, you know, anything that can come out of these barracks that will be able to save him at this point. And there's the GG. Very nice. Yeah, not a bad game from both the players. I think it was just um, the Terran, Nevane had a bit of uh, trouble securing that third base. So that kind of prevented him from being able to um, you know, really get get strong enough to deal with Ultras in the late game. Mm -hmm. Alright, we'll see if Nevane can bring it back here in game two. Or if Doc Holiday can secure a 2 over Team Supply Block. Oh. Alright, so in the top right of Tower Cross, we have the Green Terran, Nevane. And in the bottom right, we have the Teal Zerg, Doc Holiday. So right away we can see Doc is scouting in the correct direction. Uh, at least in the direction that his opponent is. I don't see anything too cheesy coming out just yet. Yeah, it looks like uh, more than five drones for Doc, so <laughs> I think I think Nevane will be uh, safe for the next few minutes at least. <laughs> oh, we'll have to see how the players want to open here. Uh, there's a lot of kind of abusable things you can do on this map. I guess Terran, uh, you could like drop tanks on the cliff above the Zerg's natural, especially if the Zerg doesn't go for a muta build. But conversely, a Zerg, I mean, you could drop lurkers up there, deny some gas mining. Or you can kind of use that high ground to uh, help your mutas, protect your mutas. Yeah, for sure. I, mean, I do want to point out, Snipe, Protoss don't have a good unit to, to kind of camp them on those ledges. So, you know, yeah. Zerg and Terran are OP. Protoss needs to get buffed, man. <laughs> I mean, realistically, though, what, what would you drop on that ledge, right? Like two Dragoons? Dragoons, or you could throw a temp high Templar up there. Oh, for, storm, oh, for sure, but, yeah. I mean, it could get picked off pretty easily, so. Alright, so. Oh, so uh, Doc has kind of uh, deviated from his standard uh, 12 hatch build. He's going for 9 pull speed. So, looks like he's going to try to end it early with a lot of speedlings. So, if Nevane, you know, doesn't react properly, there could be some trouble. Uh, it does look like Nevane is going to scout him first, so he should be able to prepare. As soon as he sees us, I'd like to see the reaction. Uh, his barracks isn't quite done yet, so he sees us now and knows it's coming. I'd like to see, you know, get a bunker and start getting some marines or blocking his choke off. Like, he could even throw a supply depot down in that choke, kind of block it off. Oh, I thought he was about to with his SUV there. Um, and it actually makes a tight wall, so he could put some marines behind it and buy himself some time. Because the main thing is he's got to defend these lings. We see he's throwing down another barracks. And he's building a bunker too, but I'm not sure if this bunker yeah. is going to be too useful. Because, I mean, at this point, even if it does finish and one marine or two marines go in, the lings can always just run right by it. Yeah, I'm not sure about this positioning. If you are going to build the bunker, you should build it closer to protect oh, no. some of your things because he gets yeah, so out. <laughs> the links just run right by not a single one dies yeah oh man and now he's gonna have free reign in the main here and oh looks like he's gonna GG to that. very short game too but it worked out for doc yeah really really good by him um Why is I this think... game still good <laughs> <Wait>, what <laughs> 
Interesting, interesting. So Doc Holiday keeps uh keeps the legacy alive. He uh, goes for a sub four minute win once again. <laughs> but um, yeah, unfortunate because Naveen didn't. Naveen definitely had enough time to respond. Uh, if he had done what you said, you know, like thrown down a supply depot in that little choke, you know, you know, so what? At least uh, it does block him in his base, but at least he lives, right? So. Mm -hmm.